Hi, Claudia. Imagine seeing you here. What a surprise. <laughs> I know. Kitty, this is our third burst of happiness, which is dedicated to personal impact. In this episode, we are talking about what is personal impact and how innovation, jokes, kindness and luck can help us to increase it. Are you excited? I am so excited. I just want to do a reminder for people who are new to the podcast that these are all episodes that were released in our first series where we've gone through the alphabet and looked at a topic each week and done a dare for each of those topics. So you should revisit those if you haven't listened to them yet. Okay, Kitty, so personal impact. Um, quite interesting phrase. What does it mean to you to have a personal impact? So when I've been thinking about this, the word impact has been interesting because there's different scales I think of impact and also different longevity to your impact so something can be quite short-lived and have a big impact in that moment but also some things can have an impact over a long period of time so I think personal impact is like thinking about what actions you take and what those actions look like outside of your own self can you give us like straight away an example to demonstrate you can have an impact on something very short term and externally say you give somebody's asked you for some money and you've given them to them straight away that's a short term impact on that person there's no getting away from the fact that it's made an impact but will it last that long And then there's another longer term impact which you can have where perhaps you are working with a charity that supports the people that are looking for this money where that impact has a longer life, a longer shelf life. Oh, I like that. I really like that distinction. And then mm. I think when you dive deeper into this, you have also impact that we have in our personal life. We also have an impact in professional life. We have impact mm. within the community. For me, personal impact means the ability to show up and have mm. a certain effect on someone or something that is in our presence. And I really like this phrase of showing up. And I must admit, I got inspired by that phrase when watching TEDx Women London, mm. as they had this theme of showing up for the world, showing up for each other, showing up at work, and actually showing mm. up for ourselves. And I really like this phrase because that means that we can choose every moment how we can show up and every time we can show up differently and as you mentioned we can show up at the smaller or a larger scale depending on our choices i hear that as it's a very conscious decision and then you said choosing to i think maybe that's something that's interesting is the impact is it accidental or is there an effort there to make an impact or i guess impact can happen as part of something else but by showing up you're making a bit of a decisive action to your impact mm, yes I think for me personally when I think about the impact I think about it quite consciously but you're right sometimes we might have an impact in a quite unconscious way Mm. Uh, we may come across or make decisions that we actually don't realize how they impacted others around us. So we need to kind of sometimes be conscious about those elements which may be escaping our attention. How are they impacting the world around us? But let's say it is a conscious decision. How do we know what personal impact we have? Okay, so I think that you've got lots of ways of judging your impact. If we're talking about a work setting, it's more in our practice to monitor and report on our impact. But I don't think in a social setting or family or relationships, we report on our impact that much. But it's something that we have spoken about in previous episodes of like getting together, doing your dream plan, looking at the year before and things like that. And actually, that is a way of judging your impact in that year for your relationships. Mm. So I think you can quantify it sometimes. Also, I think impact can you can judge your impact by other people's feedback and listening to what other people are telling you. You have to come out of yourself a little bit and look at the environment around you and how it's changing and what's being fed back to you to understand your impact. 
Yes, I agree. I think that feedback from others, but also kind of looking strategically of kind of our impact and input um, is this very conscious and very self-aware task that we need to take on to be able to assess it. I also think I would add to this list, maybe uh, if we're thinking about bigger impact, uh, maybe our consumer choices that we make. Sometimes thinking, you know, how do we show up for environment and how our consumer decisions have impact on environment. And I think that's quite interesting one to think about. And a second kind of, let's say, source of feedback on our impact, it's maybe a level of energy that we bring to our relationship in interactions. Because I read this quite interesting concept of being radiator, as in radiating positive energy or being a drainer as in draining Uh. positive energy I don't know if you ever encounter such situation or perhaps you know you were a drainer or radiator in certain relationships or meetings yeah but that's two sides of impact isn't it people Mm. can have a negative impact when you were talking there about the environmental impact, I can't believe that didn't come to me while I was thinking. That shows how much I consider it. Kitty, this is not a competition. <laughs> I know. But I didn't consider environmental impact, even though that is an absolute phrase, isn't it? Like, I mm-hmm. hear that phrase all the time, environmental impact. So, and that's hugely external and also quite, well, very long term that's not an immediate impact at all um but I think the the challenging thing to feel that impact or I think what's hard for people to grasp for environmental impact is it is hard to see that in front of you Mm -hmm. so being being uplifting kind I mean we'll come to these topics jokes these things that you bring to relationships, you can see an immediate effect of those actions and the immediate impact. But with an environmental um, example, you can't see it, you can't feel it, you can't touch it. You just have to read to understand that in the long term, your action now will have an impact later. Mm -hmm. But that's so hard to grasp or get the kind of reward or benefit from immediately. Mm -hmm. I agree. And I think that's why when you mention your short term impact, as you're saying, that's much easier, longer term Mm. impact, we almost need to have this trust and faith that the personal impact that we are creating now will have an effect long term in the future. And we almost need to kind of trust that that will happen and that will be positive without seeing those outcomes straight away. But I think it is worth considering. I think it's worth considering impact from all these different angles that we're talking about. So conscious versus unconscious impact that we may have, very short term in this immediate situations, but also long term and on bigger scale like environment and also even impact in terms of feelings and energy and outcomes and considering all this feedback that we can get around impact so personal impact so much into it Really, Kitty, we are about happiness and uh, those positive emotions. And so let's have a think about how having personal impact makes us feel. Having a positive personal impact makes me feel rewarded and a bit like meaning, Mm -hmm. a bit like purpose, a bit like I've done something of use here and that makes me feel good so that I've had a made a positive contribution and it's long lasting or it's had a it's had a positive effect on somebody else. Mm-hmm. I also listed meaning and that having then increased level of happiness, but I also thought about impact in terms of resilience oh. as well, thinking that um, it does help me in challenging situations to feel that I can maybe control or impact my mindset and maybe some elements of that situation that really helps me to stay more resilient okay that's really interesting i i seem to jump to work examples quite quickly but with resilience and work when something i'm finding really hard at work 
and I have to push through one of the things I do pull on is what is the impact this will have and the and the purpose of this and how will this impact the rest of my team for example like I've just spent a long time going through processes making sure our processes are good making sure our scope of work to clients is good so that the hours each person who's working on it delivers it and they don't get overworked it's been so confusing to me to get my head around but when I find myself thinking I can't do this actually it's thinking about the impact that this work will have that pushes me into doing it is that what you mean that sort of thing yes absolutely Uh, so we have resilience we have meaning we have purpose and the other and obviously on the on the basis of that we are increasing our happiness because we know that correlation between all those feelings and happiness is very tight as in if they go up the happiness goes up kitty you'll be pleased to know that research confirms our experience that is studies on people who are really happy they show that these people will take the best out of themselves and so really they take their strengths and skills and they apply them to have a positive impact in their work environment and life oh i love that giving the best of you out there to make an impact absolutely I would like to know, Kitty, now, how during last month or so you've applied learnings from innovation, jokes, and kindness and luck to increase your personal impact so we can give our listeners something practical to increase their personal impact to be happy. How did it go for you? So when we recorded innovation, we both found it really challenging. So for that episode, what we established was you need a real problem to fix with innovation. So I was wondering how innovation would land this week because it was such a challenge before. And this made me realize the difference between short-term impact and long-term impact and how innovation, in my experience, where I've related to the innovation is in a very long-term impact. So this time last year, we created a trainee program that you worked with me on for hospitality training. Mm Now, this time last year, that felt innovative, but its impact was very, very low because it was just starting to get off the ground. We were just making it and we've continued to make it and adapt it. And the, the innovation part of that project was is long gone. Now, a year on, I'm in the impact stage because I'm speaking to restaurants that have come on the course that are filling in my survey that are saying, I feel reinvigorated about my socials. I'm feeling confident to do my marketing now. And we're having a huge impact on these businesses that are in one of the most challenging positions they've been in. So innovation, it's taken a year for that impact. But now I'm feeling the benefits of it and it feels amazing. I really love that example because it's so um, powerful to see the impact of our actions at the later stage when, as you say, during the time you may have doubts and there might be challenges and um, you may not see the effects straight away. But how amazing. So congratulations, Kitty. That's like, yay, celebration. Thanks, Claudia. And then, so then my practical, it's it's sort of practical, but it's sort of um, like what's whatever the word is for your own head and motivation and determination, but not to, and people have said it a billion times, but don't give up just at the first hurdle of that innovative idea. And, you know, you do, it does need a, a good strategy, a good route to success. But just because your idea and your innovative idea hasn't taken on straight away it doesn't mean that it won't have an impact Mm -hmm. later on I like that and I really love that you thought about innovation in this longer term I actually thought about innovation and having that personal impact via innovation in shorter term of being able to have ideas and a quick fixes straight away Um, And that's because uh, I guess I'm in the situation that I started a new role and uh, there are, I'm coming with a fresh perspective and I can quite quickly um, identify 
something as I called quick wins. That is projects that have been started but not, co not completed and we can finalize them to make that impact quite quickly uh, or uh, projects that maybe didn't work and we can fix one little bit and they will start being more effective and more impactful. So it's quite interesting that I thought about it in a quite short term quick fixes whereas you thought about it in a more strategic if I want to have a long term impact on hospitality sector this is a longer term program that we need to um, kind of we need to launch, but then we need to wait for those effects for people to really make impactful decisions. But I think in both cases, innovation is a fantastic tool to increase our contribution and a personal impact. I think we both agree. Definitely. I was also thinking because I do tend to instinctively lean very like my first thoughts always come back to work. But I was also thinking about relationships and surprises and little like rituals that are innovative within your relationships. Mm -hmm. they, that's probably more short term, but they do have a long term impact too, because it makes you, it has an impact on the way that person thinks about the way you think about them. I know. And it's so cute that you're mentioning this because, you know, for all the listeners out there, Kitty's in a beautiful new relationship. So she's like <laughs> still reinventing all these little cute habits that they will have together. So yes, it is full of innovation. I think I need to revisit re innovation in my relationship after being 10 years years together so <laughs> yeah well exactly but I think it does make an impact and it is innovation innovation isn't just business isn't just product and also I don't know if it does need to fix a problem you know like we talked about like I just mentioned I can't remember exactly if we go into more than just fixing a problem but to be innovative in a relationship and just do something new does have an impact mm-hmm Yes, absolutely. And uh, you remember when we were recording the innovation, we also, we also spoke about four factors that can help us to be more innovative and have a grand ideas. And that was by the writer and a researcher, Richard St. John. And uh, yes, he was speaking about that there need to be some kind of challenge or something that you want to improve. But he also was speaking quite a lot about this aspect of listening to other people because anyone's behavior or reaction can spark an idea for us. Uh, also being quite curious, uh, because again, that being curious means that we're learning new information and that can sparkle our creativity. And finally, is writing down ideas. It doesn't matter how silly or they are, because actually the grand ideas are really a synthesis of little tiny sparks of creativity that the, we may have. Yeah, so you can write down all your little ideas for your relations and habits and then look at it and your grand idea really will be about probably fusing all those topics together yeah, you know cute i know <laughs> so cute <laughs> <laughs> mm. okay kitty next to our uh, next letter jokes um and again, I really enjoyed that letter. Uh, obviously, we had a fabulous guest last time. Yeah, James Lance was on our show that episode. He's in Ted Lasso, which is an amazing series on Apple TV. And also book group, etc. Oh my gosh, James Lance. Exactly. We were speaking, speaking quite a lot about what is a good joke. But I think what really we could learn and apply from jokes to personal impact is how we can change that energy in the room. So be that radiator with use of humor. And I must say, the more I kind of start reflecting on it, the more I start observing that I do that quite a lot. I started noticing a pattern in all my work meetings and even actually family meetings on Skype as well that I usually try to start with just joking about something. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, however, I also notice that the more I'm stressed about something, I'll be joking even more. So definitely that kind of personal impact of uh, using your humor uh, can be one idea of how to bring that energy to the relationships. Yeah. I was thinking about jokes and how they have an impact on the way people think of you. So they can make someone quite memorable. But I don't think it's the specific joke that's memorable. It's the energy that that brings. 
So like, oh yeah, they were great. They were so funny. But also I think jokes is quite an interesting one because it's a fine line. Like you can play the wrong joke, make it offend, offend someone yes. and actually <laughs> have quite a negative impact. I was tra- I was thinking about it and I think with a bad joke, I get the impression that the bad joke is remembered as alongside the person, whereas the good jokes are just part of that person's personality. And I found that quite nice as a theory mm. because I think that if someone tells an offensive joke, they'll remember that joke. They won't necessarily say that person is offensive unless they are doing it all the all the time. But actually, if you're bringing if you're bringing some light humor and good good spirit, that actually does get associated to your personality. So I thought that that was I quite enjoyed that line of thought as a theory. Not that it's got any science behind it. Well, but. we need to test it out. Actually, I think that I th- I I like that theory. I really do. I think that would be a fantastic research experiment we can do around this. But you're right. I think the idea of the humor. Right. We spoke about four different types of humor, and if your humor is affiliative, which means you are engaging in a positive banter, then you're building relationship mm. with people. If you have like self uh, enhancing humor, then it's simply a coping humor, which, as I already mentioned, that's quite important to me. So you kind of laughing at the tricky situation or um, something stressful to just kind of release that tension but there is also aggressive humor which Mm. can be seen as sarcasm teasing ridicule and obviously that has negative e-personal impact and also you might have self-defeating humor which is actually you attempting others to like you by being mean to yourself and you putting yourself down. Mm. So again, that may make people cringe or make them feel uncomfortable. So you're right, it is a fine Mm. line. But I am hoping that your theory is uh, correct because in many, many times I made a bad joke. So I'm (laughs) hoping that people don't remember me. They just remember the joke. (laughs) (laughs) I think they remember you and the joke, but I don't think the joke determines their opinion on your personality. That's my theory. So I've never done a scientific um, research piece. So this will be my first one. (laughs) Yes, we're looking forward to seeing the results, Kitty. Um, Okay, kindness. Uh, It's another very interesting one. I must say that I haven't um, spent too much time, unfortunately, uh, on kindness. Being kind. Yeah, I've just been very mean all last month. Um, No, as in, um, I think I haven't spent much additional time reflecting around kindness, but I can see how our behaviors and our kindness can really impact people at the kind of higher many degrees of separation if you like so if you're impacting one person around kindness then you're impacting probably people around them as well and there is a research that confirms that Uh, but the reason I'm saying is that I haven't reflected much on it is that I must say that I find kindness in a digital world a little bit more trickier than in a Mm face-to-face world I I definitely notice that if I see people I have this natural kindness and kind of I want to impact them through being kind and thoughtful digitally I try but I need to consciously try to do something if that makes sense Um, I don't know whether you use kindness uh, to increase your personal impact at all I think the reason as well that I I didn't spend as much time thinking about kindness because it feels so obvious that kindness has an impact. It's like the most obvious one that that, that being kind is going to have a positive impact. But in terms of like the practical nature of current situations and how to proactively be kind, from working in social media and online, it is all over the place that you want to be positive when you're going to write something on the internet be kind i was listening to the radio rupaul's drag race has just had the final and the um one of the old winners who's now released a song was commenting on how 
whenever the winner's announced, someone is on Twitter, hundreds, thousands of people are on Twitter saying bad things about them that the other one should have won. That's one example of one TV show. Just don't do that bit. <laughs> that's, that's a way of being kind. You know, just don't send that message. You know, think about it before you do it. Is it kind? Go for it. Is it not kind? Don't. I mean, the thing is, it's kind of boring to talk about because it's obvious to mm. us. Yeah. But maybe people don't realize that yet. So Yes, because we accepted a long time ago that the kindness is the new cool. And we love the entire concept of the random act of kindness. Yeah. Uh, but yes, I do feel that if you do it digitally, you do need to do it much more consciously than that spontaneous kindness that you can have when you are de somewhere there with people around you. Yeah. Something I do at work now, which is something I have to push to do, if anyone's listening that works for me, it's not like it's because I don't want to do it. It's because it's a it's a task and it's important. So I put a lot of effort into it. But every Friday we do a roundup. I write a roundup of every team member and what they've done and what's been good this week. It goes out publicly. And then one week I put an extra amount of effort and did it all as an analogy of the circus. So everyone had a specific role <laughs> in the circus. <laughs> And what their work had been is an analogy into the circus. And everybody loved it so much. And I could see the knock-on effect of what it had to each other's talking to each other and communicating. Because we're all just messaging on Slack. Everybody's in their own rooms, very separate from each other physically. Communicating on Slack in this public way isn't really like what everybody wants to do. But because there's been a bit of effort made and it tapped into some sort of silliness but it is essentially like it's kind because everyone's gotten a little positive boost for where I've seen and I've seen them and seen the great work that they've done and I've acknowledged the great work that they've done that is not rocket science it is a bit of effort and it goes a long way to make people feel appreciated mm. so I guess that's a bit of practical and but I, I think it's because of what you were saying there of the digital world is so much harder to do that in because if we were sitting next to each other we'd be like oh that was an amazing job you did right there it takes two seconds to actually write up a whole report on everyone's actions this week you have it takes a few hours to do that um mm -hmm. so it is yeah. harder right yeah. now but i love your example So far, we said that if we want to increase the personal impact, we can generate new ideas with a short term and long term of innovation. We can make jokes to boost the energy in the room. But let's be cautious. Let's definitely um, kind of use the uh, humor to our advantage and in a kind way, let's say. Uh, and then definitely be kind uh, to others uh, to have that impact and the wider community because it has that ripple effect and you see that on social mm. media so much. One unkind message or not kind message gets replicated now even beyond seven degrees of separation, which is what research suggested initially in face-to-face -face kindness. But I also felt that in order to have that personal impact we have to have opportunities to do that and that's when the lack really comes in because without certain opportunities we may not be able to impact the world and our relationships so how do we get more luck kitty well you have to put yourself out there and you have to just make sure you are living to your fullest so really easy <laughs> i mean <laughs> But I think luck comes from your positive outlook and openness yeah. to what's coming, uh, uh, openness to what's in front of you. Being brave, uh, like you can go to online networking things, for example. They feel quite intimidating or like, oh God, how am I going to do this? And then who knows what's going to come from that. Luck might have it that you meet somebody where your experience and services will have a positive impact. But you won't know until you're in it mm -hmm, mm -hmm. we spoke so extensively in our episode on luck how luck is a mindset and Richard Weinsman is a researcher who really stresses it that if you are whether you lucky or unlucky it comes to your belief 
and it really comes how open-minded and engaging you are in your opportunities like you just mentioned networking and also how much you're expecting positive outcomes even in negative situations and he runs a luck school when you learn certain principles of lucky mindset i think that's quite it's quite interesting one to remember and i think in terms of personal impact if we want to have personal impact Yes, sometimes we'll be in the right place at the right time to make that impact and the universe will give us on a silver platter the opportunity to do that. And we still kind of need to show up for it and take that opportunity. But in many situations, probably majority of situations, it's our lucky mindset that we need to apply to create opportunities to have that personal impact. Because if we'll be just waiting for universe to give us to us, our personal impact and again this is my opinion I think my personal impact would have been much lower if I would be just waiting for that opportunity to come so it's being that proactive in generating lucky opportunities it's almost like the more lucky I am the the, the harder I work on having that personal impact I went down a bit of a different route with my notes and how the fluke of a lucky incident can impact the rest of your life but then I think it's with with, in relation to happiness it's your perception of that incident that has the impact yeah so if you see and the example that you gave us in the original episode was if you're in a bank and you get shot at you get shot at in the arm do you think of yourself as lucky or unlucky I think that you the impact of those lucky or unlucky experiences is about your own mindset too Mm -hmm. so your personal impact is also affected by your approach and your open-mindedness and kind of gratitude and it made me think of Darren Brown's tv show which he did trick or treat and he hypnotized somebody and then they had to watch as they'd seemed to be in a car accident and rushed off to hospital but then they were woken up by Darren Brown and they weren't in hospital and they felt incredibly grateful to be alive Mm -hmm. and I just thought of what amazing impact that feeling of luck Mm -hmm. is on the rest of your life like it could change that one incident can change have an impact on how you do everything your gratitude for the planet and (laughs) environmental impact (laughs) I've gone off on a bit of a tangent. I know, but, but that's just, what I was thinking. I'm of. just thinking, like, what a show! I mean, is that even ethically allowed to do? To yeah, people? Like, I mean, yeah, that was Trick or Treat. His show, Trick or Treat. Oh my god, it's such a good show. Okay, okay, uh, but I do like the idea that the personal impact we can have personal impact by choosing that mi- right mindset as well. That is a very, yeah. I think, that's very valid in terms of the point. Oh my God, Claudia, that was such a great episode. We talked for ages. I know, I know. We spoke for ages, but personal impact as in our ability to show up and have effect of someone or something is so important. And I Mm. am hoping that the listeners got inspired by innovation, jokes, kindness and luck and will be applying some of our ideas to increase their personal impact and therefore boost their happiness. Exactly. For episode four, the fourth burst of happiness, we're going to be talking rest and happiness. And we're going to look over the episodes meaning, numbers, ordinary and play and see how all of those things affect our happiness in relation to rest. So if you haven't heard those episodes, please go back and listen to them now. They are really good. We would love it if you could tell one person, one friend about our series, anyone you think that would enjoy our podcast and happiness, because that is making such a difference. And please message us with any of the dares that you've done. We love getting those messages. And as always, we dare you to be happy. Bye. Bye.